Bible says that if I put the Lord first in my life, that I will be blessed. If I delight myself in God's word, my season of blessing will come. If I walk upright before him, nobody can stop me from being blessed. And God says that if I walk upright, I'll bring forth good fruit and I will prosper in whatever I do. I have been accused of preaching the prosperity gospel. I want you to know I do not believe in the traditional prosperity gospel. They've labeled me that. I'm fighting back this time because I do not believe that if you give to God, he's going to make you rich. I've never said that, but somehow some uh, newspaper writer put the label on me and it stuck and I'm fighting back this time. Because it's a lie, I believe that if you will make sacrifices unto him, that he will help you in ways that you cannot help yourself. But let me tell you, God does want you to be prosperous. But prosperous means you got enough money to pay your bills. It doesn't mean you're going to be rich. Prosperous simply means you're going to be able to pay your bills and maybe take a vacation once in a while and help your kids go to school. Come on, somebody. But God says, if I am putting him first, that I will have a season of blessing come into my life. A season now is about 90 days. Remember now, there are four seasons in the year. A season is about three months. It's about 90 days. So God says, I got a season of blessing coming for those at Heritage Christian Center. So, so I want you to know that we've got a sign in front of our, our building. I'm hoping to get a bigger sign. But it says, Sinners, welcome here. And I want you to know it's up because we are determined to love people right where they are. We are determined not to judge people, but to simply preach the truth in love and let you know that God's not mad at you, that he loves you, and he has a plan for your life. Can I get a good amen right there? But it's our job to put the Lord first and to trust him. It's our job to stand on the word of God and know that in due season, my season of blessing will come. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that you need will be added unto you. So maybe you're discouraged today because things haven't turned out the way you thought they should. I, I know that I've been greatly discouraged over the, the building project and how long it took us to get here. And then the cost, the cost ended up running over double what the contractor said they were going to be. You can only imagine what that's done to us uh, as a company, as an organization, and even to, to Pastor Michelle and I's finances. We've had to literally sell everything that we have to try to uh, keep everything going. Come on, somebody. Last Sunday, I preached a message entitled, Hold the Rope. If you were here, I talked about the fact that, that Saul was in trouble. His enemies wanted to kill him, and the disciples put him in a basket, and they simply uh, lowered him to the other side of the wall through that, with that rope that they had. So they put, a, uh, put him in a basket. They held him with a rope. They helped him get to the other side. That saved his life and saved his ministry. I told you last Sunday that we've, we've done everything we know to do to, to get the building in order. and, and to, uh, Don't you think the building's looking great? Isn't it looking fantastic? But my staff came to me and said, Pastor, we've got all of these leaks in the roof, and the contractor didn't, didn't do what he was supposed to do, and, and all of these things, and all of a sudden we're facing a, a bill of $185,000 because we got leaks all over the building and that we got to replace the roof. And so I just didn't know what to do. And, and, and I, you know, I was just praying, God, I don't know how we're going to pay these bills. And I went to the roofer and I said, is there any way you can help us make payments on it? And, and things like that. You know, sometimes you got to stretch it out. How many, know, how many know what layaway is? Sometimes you just got to do a layaway plan. I needed layaway on the roof. Come on, somebody. And so, so the, the roofer said, yeah, I'll help you out. And they got started. And, and, and then, then uh, one of our, our faithful members came to me. And I, and I didn't tell anybody about the roof. I, hadn't, I wasn't preaching about it, none of that. And this, one of our faithful members came up to me and said, Pastor, she said, I do know about the roof problem. I know about all of the leaks. And she said, I know you got to get it fixed. And I know it's a big burden upon you and First Lady. She said, I want to give $1,000 because I want to help hold the rope for you. And, and, and so I, I, just, I just thought to myself, wow, look at God. 
She said, I think you should go to the people in the congregation. And tell. I said, no, no, I've, I've already gone to them about the seats. I can't go to them anymore. It's just too much to put on them. I can't do that. And, and I, I prayed about it. I didn't know what to do about it. And, and I decided, well, I'm just going to wait and see what God does. And last Sunday, I was preaching about holding the rope. And last Sunday, I was talking about, you know, Michelle and I need you all to hold the rope for us. I mean, to save our, our ministry, to save the project. We need you to hold the rope. And I was just preaching on it. I wasn't doing anything, just, just preaching about it. I said, I need 185 of you that are bring $1,000 to, to help us hold the rope so we can get the roof paid for. And one of our, one of our church mothers, she wrote a check for $1,000. She, she walked right up here to the front and handed it to me while she was, I was preaching. And she's handed it to me while I'm preaching. And I, I said, thank you. Thank you, mother. Thank you. Put it down. And, and I'm going on preaching about holding the rope. And then another one come up. Then another one came up. Do you know that 23 people came up last Sunday? 23. Said, Pastor, we're going we're gonna to hold the rope with you. But I, what I'm trying to say to you is something changed last Sunday. Not just something changed inside me. Because when I saw the outpouring of love... From you all, as you came forward to say, in the next 90 days, I'm going to get $1,000. Maybe you got money coming back on your taxes. I don't know what it is, but, but you said you know, I, over 200 of you came forward to say, in the next 90 days, I'm going to bring $1,000 to help you hold the rope. And in my 35 years of preaching, I don't know that I ever was uncontrollably crying while I was preaching. And I've cried many times for various things, but... But it so touched my heart, the, your outpouring of love towards us, that all I could do was just stand here and cry while you all were coming forward. It was just an unbelievable thing to me. But this week, the Lord spoke to my heart, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, because of the sacrifices of the people of Heritage Christian Center, this church has just stepped into a new season of blessing. I know that when God's people begin to sacrificially give, that the windows of heaven open up over their lives. Even if you're not a giver, even if you're not a member here, I declare unto you, because of what all of these people have done, that the blessing is going to come on them, and anybody that's around them is going to get the blessing as well. I preach to you that 15 in Hebrew is uh, the, the number of, of restoration. I preach to you that, that God's put in my heart that 2015 is my year of restoration. And anybody connected to me is going to see that restoration in their lives. And I preach that. But God spoke something very clear to me this week that this that, that your sacrifices on last Sunday opened up the windows of heaven over this congregation. Michelle and I are still looking for a place to live here in Denver so we can be here full time. We go back and forth. I go back and forth twice a week, and, and uh, it's a lot, and, uh, and, and, and we need a place here. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so, so, so we're still looking and, and all of that, but, but, but so last night we, we checked into the hotel, and the hotel said, now, uh, Mr. Leonard, we're so glad to have you back, and, and, but the, the, the hotel is full. But we've decided to upgrade you to the presidential suite. I said, uh-oh, 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 look at God, look at God. My $99 room all of a sudden was upgraded to a $1,500 room. And last Sunday in both services, it happened in both services, that God showed up and you began to flood, come forward to say, God, I want to help. I want to hold the rope for pastor. I'm going to do everything I can to help him in this church. And that outpouring of love began to do something unbelievable in the spirit. It began to open up the heavens over this church. And God spoke a word to me to tell you that in the next few weeks, you're going to see supernatural things happen in your life supernatural increase take place in your life because of the sacrifices of a few, God said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven over the entire church. Oh, you got to get it in your spirit today. Something is about to change. Restoration is beginning in your life. 
I believe even this week that God will show you something special. Show you that he has you in mind. He has you on his mind. I believe he's going to show you this week that he's in charge of your life and that thing you've been waiting on for so long, God said, I'm going to begin to make that thing run towards you instead of running away from you. I see tremendous breakthroughs happening in the next 90 days. I want you to mark it down. So 90 days is about, takes you up, about up till September the 1st. In the next 90 days, I want you to get it in your heart that God's favor is on your life. I want you to get it in your heart that God sees all the sacrifices that you make and that your gift will make room for you. I declare that your season is here. I declare that you've been waiting and waiting for your season. But I proclaim that your season is here. Would you tell somebody, my season is here? My season is here. But I'm telling you that God has a calling on every one of your lives. The door hasn't opened, but get ready because the doors are opening. I declare that this is your season of miracles. Listen, I have to be very careful what I tell you because God will judge me according to what I tell you. You're under, if, if you believe me and it doesn't happen, there's no problem on your behalf. The problem is on my behalf because God will judge me if I'm just saying something to try to manipulate you, then God will judge me and I cannot withstand the judgment of God. But if I am telling you the truth, you are crazy not to jump into the middle of what I'm talking about. Get your faith out there. Believe God for the impossible. Expect the great. Your season of restoration, of refreshing is upon you. David was anointed to be king, and he had to, he had to run from his enemies and lived in the, in the wilderness for a while. He was anointed, but he had to live in the projects. Somebody knows what I'm talking about in here. God gave you a promise. God is talking to you. I came here to tell you. It's time for you to get your faith out there. Begin to elevate your thoughts and begin to believe God for breakthroughs in your life. But I'm telling you right now, something happened starting last Sunday. The heavens began to open over this ministry last Sunday. Because you know that God gave you a promise. I'm telling you that you're called by God. Start find, Just find a place to serve. Get in the choir. Get in the children's ministry. We need more ushers. We need, just find a place to serve and watch what God does in your life. Believe, 2 Chronicles 20, 20 says, Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. I'm trying to tell somebody, God gave you a promise. That promise was for a time. You had a post-dated promise. But I'm telling you, that, that check's going to be ready, is about ready to be cashed. It's a post-dated check. But that is post-dated for today. It's post-dated for right now. It's, your waiting has not been in vain. Because you're in your waiting, you learn to get a hold of God. In your waiting, you begin to seek God for new direction. I'm going to talk about new direction next week. Something changed in the spirit last week when you began to give sacrificially unto the Lord. I'm thinking about a young lady right now that came forward in, this, in the first service last Sunday. She, had, she didn't know how she could do it, but she said, she said that you were my pastor for many years before you left town. I was a little girl raised in your church. She said, I was so disappointed when you left. She said, if that man ever comes back to Denver, I'm going to help him. And she didn't know how she could do it, but she said, I'm determined to help you, Pastor. She came on Tuesday night, and she put her arms around me, and she started crying with her three small children. And she said, Pastor, she said, I have these three kids. I don't have a husband. I have no job. I don't know how I can make it. This is all the money that I have in the world. And we began to cry on each other's shoulders. And I said, Brittany, I'm holding the rope for you. I remember Tuesday night at midnight, I had my hands raised in my bed. 
holding the rope for Brittany this last Tuesday night. All I can say to you is we need each other. We can't make it without one another. On a personal level, there was nothing inside me that wanted to receive that money that she brought to me on Tuesday night. As badly as we needed it, I knew she needed it way more than me. There's nothing inside me that wanted to take that from her. It was all I could do to take it and say, I, I love you, Brittany. I bless you. But I, that, God, that God showed me later on uh, this last week that her giving was holy ground. That it was holy money unto the Lord. And I say to you, whether you give large or you give small, that is holy ground. I believe that we are responsible to God for every dollar that you bring into this church. Every dollar that you give. It is, it's blood, sweat, and tears. I believe that, that you know, it's your, it's your substance. It's your life blood. It, it's, it's part of you. And when you say, God, I love you so much. I, I got so much faith in you that you turn loose of that to, to further the kingdom of God. I believe it's holy ground. Can I get a witness in here today? But I believe with all of my heart, the way God blesses us is when we come to the house of sacrifice with a sacrifice. And they say, God, I'm believing for you to make up the difference in my life. we got to put all of our troubles in his hands. This coming Tuesday night is happy hour. God has put on my heart to preach on the power of the Holy Spirit for happy hour on Tuesday night. I have not preached on the, on the power of the Holy Spirit in probably a couple of years. But God has put on my heart that this Tuesday night for happy hour to, to bring that word to you about the anointing of the Holy Spirit and about the, the uh, I'm reminded about the, uh, in fact, God's even given me a title for the message. It's called the sound of freedom. On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They all began to speak in a in a heavenly prayer language. And it was the sound of freedom in their lives. Don't miss happy hour this Tuesday, whatever you do. But we got to trust God. What have you been waiting on God for? I want you to think about it now. What have you been waiting on God about? Has it been about your children? Has it been about your job? Maybe, maybe you need an advancement on your job. Maybe you need a job. I don't know. Maybe it's got to do with your career. Maybe what doors do you need for God? To, I believe in the next 90 days we're going to see a move of God where we see all of those things take place in our lives. What is it that you've been waiting on God to do in your life? Would you get it in your spirit that now is the time? Would you get it in your spirit? You've been waiting and waiting. You've been waiting on the Lord. You've been patient but would you get it in your spirit that now is the time? I want you to think about going all the way for the next 90 days. For the next 90 days, you're going to be in church every Sunday, every Tuesday. Every Sunday, every Tuesday. Now, some people have to work. I understand that you can't, you can't, you can't, you know, leave work because of that. I got it. You know, you got to have your job. But outside of that, for the next 90 days, you'll be in church every, every Sunday, every Tuesday. You're going to bring God your tithes and an offering, a sacrifice, even if God puts it on your heart, for 90 days. You don't have that much to lose. But if I'm preaching the truth, and if this is the season of blessing, if this is your season, you would be foolish not to jump in and go all the way with him. Find a place to serve. Just say, God, I use my life as a sacrifice. Let me tell you, it's a sacrifice to serve in your church. That's the whole point, is it's a sacrifice. If it's easy, it's not a sacrifice. God wants you to make a sacrifice for him. Let me tell you, I can't wait another five years for this season to come around. I can't wait another two years. Come on, somebody. In fact, I can't wait another year. This, this has got to happen right now. This is my season. And if it's my season, it's got to be your season. I got to be ready to move when God says move. I got to be ready to get up when God says get up. Now is my time. Now is my season. Touch somebody and just simply tell them, your season is here. Your season is here. We don't have time to fool around. Next Sunday is church dedication. Now, you can only dedicate a church one time. This is it. I mean, Nehemiah dedicated the wall unto God. I, 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 how many have dedicated your children unto God? We're going to dedicate this building unto God. you got to bring somebody with you. Bring somebody that used to come to Heritage next week. Just, just 
be a part of this special dedication week next Sunday. It's going to be very special. Somebody say, I will. But all I'm saying to you is Elijah could hear the, uh, the sound of abundance. I'm telling you, I hear it. I can even see it. Come on, somebody. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. It's been raining every day. That's got to be a sign in some way that God's about to open the windows of heaven spiritually over our lives. You know the story about the, the crippled man at the pool. And the Bible says that at a certain season, an angel came down and stirred up the water. And whoever jumped in the water first got their miracle. But he kept missing it because he couldn't get in the water in time. But I came here to tell somebody the water got stirred up last Sunday. I came here to tell somebody a move of God began last Sunday. If you will jump in now, you will see what God wants to do in your life. You can't afford to put your life on hold anymore. You got you to get up and begin to do something, begin to trust God in a whole new way. You're frustrated because you keep missing your season. Now let, me, let me tell you this way. Some people are so sensitive that they continually miss what God has for them. I'm talking about God told you to find a place to serve in your church. You did. You got your feelings hurt. Now you quit. Some people literally, because they get their feelings hurt all the time, can't ever get blessed because their feelings, their emotions take the, uh, the best of them. Now, if you're going to serve God, you've got to get some tough skin. I'm trying to help somebody in here. Folk are going, how many know that people are a They're a trip. So why are you getting your feelings hurt? They're a trip. Just keep on serving God. Just keep on putting him first. Just keep on loving the Lord. And don't be concerned about people because folk are a trip. Don't be worrying about them. And if you get your feelings hurt, shake it off, baby. Just shake it off and move on. I know people right now that are supposed to be in this church. They can't stay in this church because they get their feelings hurt all the time. They have so much baggage that they cannot get involved in a church and make it. Oh, that's a word for somebody right there. God wants to... Bring you into a new season in your life. A season is 90 days, is it not? Can you, can you for 90 days go all the way with him? I say that the water has been stirred up and all you got to do is get in. Because wouldn't it be a shame to come to the end of your life and found out that you, you wasted it? You come to the end of your life and found out that because of your hurt feelings, you missed everything that God has for you. The number one reason I think that people backslide is because God's too slow for them. God's pretty slow sometimes for me, I want you to know. But I'm telling you, don't get tired of waiting. All this waiting you've been doing has been leading you up to right now, leading you up to today. Now, if you look at the mistakes you've made in the past, most of the mistakes you made were because you got impatient. You didn't wait on God. You, you found your own man. God didn't bring him to you. You found your own man or your own woman, and now you're paying the price today. I know you can't say nothing because they're sitting right beside you, but you know. I came here to hold the rope for somebody. Oh, you're holding a rope for me. I came here to hold the rope for somebody. I came here to pray you through. I feel that God's talking to somebody right now that knows they missed their season before. You know that God brought you your season and you messed it up somehow. God says, I'm bringing your season back one more time. I'm bringing it back one more time. One more time around. Somebody say amen. It's no accident that God brought you here today. Memorial Weekend 2015. It's no accident he brought you here today. God brought you here to change your season. If you'll sell out to him, I'm telling you, you're going to see unbelievable things take place in the next few weeks. 
Listen to me. In the next week, something's going to happen in your life. You're going to go, uh-oh, look at God. Uh-oh, look at God. Last Sunday, I'm standing here preaching, and mama brings up a check. Another mama brings up a check. Then a brother brings up a check. And I, all, I, I, all I could say was, look at God. Uh-oh, look at God. That's an aha moment. You're going to have an aha moment very soon. But in the next 90 days, you're going to see that come to fruition in your life. And no, you do not deserve for him to bless you. No, I don't deserve for him to bless me. But we stepped into a new season. And because of the sacrifices of so many, it's going to fall on you as well. I love the story of Job. Job lost everything. Job lost his family except for his backbiting wife. He lost everybody. He lost his children, his grandchildren. He, he lost his cattle, his camels. He lost everything. But God restored everything in his life. God gave him double for his trouble. Oh, somebody needs to get a hold of God right now. I'm saying that God's going to give you double for your trouble. Your season of blessing has come. Your season of miracles has come. So many people have dropped out of church today. They've lost their faith, but you didn't lose your faith. You held on to the Lord. You're still here today. You could have quit, but you didn't quit. Folk tried to talk you out of it, but you kept on keeping on. I declare that you've stepped into a new season. You watch what happens in the next few weeks. No matter how bad it looks in the past, I'm telling you right now, God will not be mocked, and what you have sown, you shall reap. He's gonna, he's, the money may not be here yet, but I declare that the money is on the way. Hey, ho, devil, you've got to go. You've got to go. Get your hands off of my money. Get your hands off of my children. Get your hands off of my family. The water has been stirred up. I said the water's been stirred up. All you got to do is jump in. God brought you here to turn some things around. God brought you here to say, I'm about to do a new thing in your life. It's a new season. I'm going to bring it back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over. Stand on your feet, everybody. How many can say, Pastor, you were preaching to me today? Okay. Here, I'm going to have you come forward. Here's what I'm having you come forward for. I'm going to pray over you. But you want, you're going to make a commitment for 90 days to go all the way with him. To be in church. To give him your tithes, your offerings. Come on. Come on up. For 90 days, you're going to give him your all. You don't have that much to lose. For 90 days. 90 days. Sing this song as you come. It's a new day. So, so these, these people just brought up $100 checks. They said, I want, I'm going to hold the rope for you, Pastor. I'm going to hold the rope. God sees every gift, large or small. He sees the sacrifices. And it's the sacrifice that opens the windows of heaven. It's the sacrifice. God said, I'm about to bless this church. You watch. You watch in the next few weeks. It's going to build. That's right. You watch in the next few weeks what God does. Get your expectors out there. Start believing God like you've never believed him before. Start trusting God to do things he hasn't done in the past. Your faith has been weak, but it's a new day. Our faith is going to carry you through. The windows of heaven have been opened, maybe not by you, but by others. But I'm telling you, 
just by association, you're going to be blessed. Somebody say amen. amen. Raise a hand to the Lord. Let me pray over you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for these beautiful people today. Lord, I thank you for their heart. Thank you for them holding the rope for us. And now we hold the rope for them. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Change us, Lord. We need your strength today. Lord, I pray now as we make a new commitment for 90 days to go all the way with you. Every Sunday, every Tuesday. Every Sunday, every Tuesday. Our tithes and offerings unto God. Lord, as we make this new commitment, I thank you for opening the windows of heaven, the blessings of God to pour upon each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody raise a hand and say, Lord Jesus, I reach up to you. I'm sorry for my sin, my failures. God, you were right. I was wrong. I surrender to you. For 90 days, I'm going all the way with you. For 90 days, I'll put you first. For 90 days, I will bring sacrifices unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at somebody and say, your season's already here. Your season is already here. Give somebody a hug. I'll see you for a happy hour. Happy hour on Tuesday night. God bless you.